Gracie is an active 14-year-old, a cheerleader with lots of friends and a zest for life. So when she was diagnosed with a condition that required a feeding tube, she took it in stride pretty easily, and so did her mom and dad. In fact, most people, children or adults, adapt quite easily to the use and care of the Mickey low-profile feeding tube, just as Gracie and her family did. The Mickey low-profile feeding tube is made by Kimberly Clark, a leader in enteral feeding tubes and a well-established name among healthcare professionals. The Mickey feeding tube has many features that are important and worth noting. Let's take a look at some of those features. Low profile means that the Mickey tube is designed to lie very close against the patient's body. The size of the stoma and tube are carefully matched by the doctor for a proper fit, which minimizes restriction on activity. This is the distal tip. It's tapered so that insertion into the stoma tract is easy. This is the external bolster. It helps hold the tube in place. The slim design allows more air to circulate around the stoma site and makes it easy to care for. Another special feature of the Mickey feeding tube is this little balloon called the retention balloon. It also holds the Mickey tube in place within the stomach and secure in the stoma tract. The balloon inflation port is used to inflate the balloon. When the balloon is inflated to the proper size, the external portion of the Mickey feeding tube should float just above the skin, with a space about the thickness of a dime. The Mickey kit comes with several important accessories you'll need to get started with feedings right away. It includes two types of extension sets for two types of feeding methods. One for continuous feeding, where the feeding is administered with the use of a pump and over a longer period of time, the other for bolus feeding, where feedings are periodic and usually of short duration, like breakfast, lunch, or dinner. The doctor decides whether bolus or continuous feedings will suit the patient's nutritional needs better. A few years ago, Gracie's doctor recommended a Mickey feeding tube for Gracie's supplementary feedings. She was delighted to have a feeding tube that didn't stick out from her body. Now, she's perfectly confident setting herself up for her six-hour continuous feedings. As she would say, it's no big deal. To complete your tour of the Mickey feeding tube, let's look at a few more important features. This is the feeding port. This is where the extension set is connected. This is another very helpful part of the Mickey feeding tube, the anti-reflux valve. It is located inside the feeding port, where its job is to help prevent the stomach contents from leaking out when the patient is not feeding and the extension set is not hooked up. Here is the feeding port cover. It prevents bits of formula, you might call it gunk, from accumulating inside the feeding port and valve. Here you see the Mickey feeding tube connected to the extension set. This is the secure lock connection mechanism. It allows the tube to move around so it's more comfortable. Now that you're familiar with the parts of the Mickey feeding tube, and you know about the two different extension sets used to hook up for a feeding, let's walk through a typical feeding procedure from start to finish. It is simple and logical. It'll be second nature to you in no time. Before you do anything else, wash your hands every time. This is very important. Before a feeding, use a small amount of water to flush and pre-lubricate the extension set and tube. Be sure you check the Mickey feeding tube before each feeding to make sure that it's still in position. It's a simple procedure. For details, consult your guidebook or ask your nurse or doctor. Now that you've done the prep, let's see how a feeding setup works. Just follow these steps. Using the appropriate extension set as your doctor has directed, connect the extension set to the Mickey feeding port. Align the black line on the extension set connector with the line on the feeding port. Push it into the anti-reflux valve and turn it clockwise. To disconnect after feeding, realign the black lines and pull out the extension set connector. If your doctor has prescribed continuous feeding, connect the continuous extension set to the stepped connector from the feeding bag with a firm push and twist. Wetting the stepped connector before insertion may provide a more secure connection. For bolus feeding, connect the bolus extension set to the catheter tip syringe with a firm push and twist. Finally, your doctor may have recommended that you check for proper placement before each feeding. 
For more details on how to do this, refer to your care guide or contact your health care professional. Camp Wackenhack? That's a fun camp. Uh, most of my friends go there. We have kayaks, we have archery, we have biking. It hasn't interfered with anything at all. Nothing that I can think of. Swimming, if you get a bathing suit with light designs on it, I can't see it. Gracie's parents couldn't believe how easy the Mickey feeding tube was to live with. One look at Gracie's life and you can see that the Mickey feeding tube doesn't hold her back at all. So don't feel nervous. The first few times you do a feeding, you might find it helpful to refer back to your care guide. The back page of the guide also contains an information card on which you or your healthcare professional can record important information specific to the Mickey feeding tube and the patient's nutritional needs. Of course, any time questions come up, you should feel free to call your nurse or doctor. There are a few things you need to do in the way of everyday care of the Mickey feeding tube. Most of it is common sense. In order to prolong tube life and help prevent infection at the stoma site, be sure you maintain the cleanliness of the Mickey feeding tube and the skin around the stoma. Remember to clean the anti-reflux valve to keep it functioning properly. A cotton-tipped applicator works well. Clean the extension set immediately after each use. Wash in warm, soapy water, rinse, and allow to air dry. For flushing the extension set, use the catheter-tipped syringe. When the extension set needs to be replaced, it is available from medical supply sources. The balloon is made of silicone, which can be semi-permeable to some fluids, so the balloon may change in volume over time. Your doctor may recommend that you check periodically to make sure that the retention balloon is still properly filled. It's simple to do. Take the lure slip syringe that came with the Mickey kit and push the plunger all the way in. Now attach it to the Mickey balloon port and pull back on the plunger. If the fluid that comes into the syringe is less than the originally prescribed amount, detach the syringe, fill it up to the proper amount, and reattach it to the balloon port. Push the plunger in, and the balloon is now filled to the right amount. The recommended balloon fill volume is 5 cc's. However, your doctor may recommend a different amount. Whatever amount is prescribed, be careful not to overfill it. 10 cc's is the maximum amount. Never use air to fill the balloon. Use distilled water or saline. Never put medications in the balloon. Keeping the stoma site clean is very important, but it is also very simple with just a few daily steps. Each day, rotate the tube within the tract to prevent adhesions. Clean around the stoma with mild soap and water and pat dry. Your doctor or caregiver may recommend other cleansing agents as well. Be sure to check the stoma site daily for any signs of redness, leakage, infection, swelling, or bleeding from within and around the tube. If you find such symptoms and they appear persistent, call your health care professional. Here are a few tips for situations and questions that may arise as you get used to the Mickey feeding tube. If there is leakage around the tube, this may indicate that the feeding tube has become improperly fitted or that formula is being delivered at too high a rate. Check with your healthcare professional to determine the exact cause and remedy. If your doctor recommends replacing the Mickey feeding tube, the care guide provides detailed instructions. Occasionally, the balloon may break, allowing the tube to become displaced. If this happens, contact your doctor immediately. It's also a good idea to have a backup tube the same size as the one that's currently in place, especially on trips and vacations. If a tube becomes clogged, do not insert anything rigid into it, as it may interfere with the proper functioning of the tube. Simply flush it with water. If this does not resolve the problem, consult your healthcare professional for help with declogging. Don't use mineral oils or petroleum-based lubricants on or around the tube, as this may shorten the life of the tube. Always give medications in liquid form. When a medication is only available in tablet or capsule form, ask your pharmacist if it can be crushed and mixed with water. Gracie and her family have learned all about the Mickey feeding tube, and so will you. But the most important thing you'll learn is that life with Mickey is not much different from life before Mickey. That's the goal of Kimberly Clark, protection for life. I'm not a good kid, I'm not a bad kid, I'm just, you know, average.